Russia and Ukraine could be on the brink of war. Moscow insists it has no intention to invade its neighbor, but the U.S. and NATO allies remain unconvinced. How high is the threat of a Russian invasion right now? It's very high. Why? It's very high because they have not, they have not moved any of their troops out. They've moved more troops in, number one. Number two, we have reason to believe that they are engaged in a false flag operation to have an excuse to go in. Every indication we have is they're prepared to go into Ukraine, attack Ukraine. Responding to those remarks, a Kremlin spokesperson accused Biden of whipping up tensions. Well, on the ground today, fresh artillery shelling broke out in the eastern Donbass region. Ukrainian officials say a nursery school was targeted in the attack by Russian-backed separatists. Three adults were reportedly injured. James Cleverly is the U.K. Minister of State for Europe and North America. He's in New York. Minister Cleverly, welcome to the show. Hi, good to be here. So Russia claimed yesterday it was pulling some troops back from near the border with Ukraine, but you've told the U.N. Security Council today that the opposite is true, that Russia's military buildup continues. So what can you tell me about the situation right now? Well, the situation as we see it is there is still well over 130,000 troops, perhaps even as much as 150,000 troops to the north, to the east, and to the southern border with uh, Ukraine. The, 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 the scale and the nature of that military buildup cannot credibly be explained away just by military exercises. This is, a, uh, this is an invasion force, and it is ready uh, imminently to invade. And what we are trying to do is make Russia understand, make Vladimir Putin understand, that to do so would be a huge strategic mistake. It would cost a lot of lives, a lot of Russian lives, and also there would be economic consequences through the sanctions package that the UK and other countries have prepared. So you say imminent. We, we, we've heard that word now, it seems like, for weeks, right, in terms of where this is. So, I mean, are we talking something that could happen in a matter of days, as, as President Biden and others are now suggesting? Well, the, the full structure and location says that they could launch uh, an invasion within days. Uh, so that's why we keep using the word imminent. Basically, until that force has dispersed, until they have gone back to their home barracks in other parts of Russia, continue to describe uh, an invasion, a credibly imminent invasion. It's up to Russia now. They could de-escalate those troops back to their home barracks across other parts of Russia and, and pursue a diplomatic way of resolving this. And this is what we're calling upon them to do. You know, there was artillery fire today in the Donbass region. Ukraine and, and Russian-backed separatists accused each other of, of violating the ceasefire. I, I wonder, sir, what, what does fresh fighting like that mean for the invasion? I mean, could this be an accelerant towards uh, more aggressive action? We know that it is a traditional part of the Kremlin playbook to create uh, disinformation, false flag operations as a pretext for uh, invasion. So uh, these kind of things are not surprising to us. Uh, we're keeping a very, very close eye on these things, but we're making it clear that the international community will not be fooled. We can see the buildup of Russian troops. We can uh, we listen to the rhetoric about what's going on in Ukraine. And what we're saying is we, 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 we know what's happening here. We can see it. So what Russian demonstrate credibly is that they're serious about peace, they're serious about diplomacy, and that they're serious about moving meaningful numbers of troops away from the border. You mentioned, sir, a false flag operation as a pretext for invasion. Uh, this is something people have been warning about. What exactly could a false flag operation look like in this instance? Well, actually, uh, Secretary Blinken at the UN uh, this morning highlighted a number of ways. It, it could be one of any number of things. But the point that the broader point we're making is that Russia keeps claiming they have no intention of invading Ukraine. If they are, if they are trying to uh, convince us that is true, the best way of doing so is by moving those troops away from the border. And until that happens, we will keep a very close eye on what happens in that eastern Ukraine border region. 
uh, about uh, claims that are made by the uh, by the Kremlin and others about what's going on there. That's that's the thing that we are taking most uh, seriously now. That's what we keep a very close eye on. I wonder, though, if you think Vladimir Putin has any interest right now in diplomacy or dialogue, because, you know, Russian lawmakers voted this week uh, to send, send a formal request to Putin to recognize the, the independence of, of two breakaway regions in eastern Ukraine, something that would be quite provocative uh, were they to do that. But based on the military buildup and, and the lack of actual de-escalation and moving away from the Ukraine border as, as you want, do you think he wants a peaceful way out of this? Well... I, I really hope so. We can't really uh, look into uh, his thinking. Only he can know what he really wants out of this. But as I say, everything that we have seen thus far has led us to the very, very strong conviction that he is preparing to in, uh, invade Ukraine. And the message that we have been trying to get across from the international community is that that would be a huge mistake, a strategic mistake. It would cost significant numbers of Russian lives and Ukrainian lives. The Ukrainians have demonstrated to the world that they are ready to stand and fight. Uh, and that would mean some casualties on both the Ukrainian and Russian sides. And as well as that, we in the UK and others have got a package ready of sanctions or the, the sanctions regime which would impose severe economic costs on Russian elites as well. So we are trying to say to Putin and the Ukraine that the best way forward for Ukrainians, for Russians, for everybody, is for Russia to de-escalate and move those troops away from the Ukrainian border. So one last question, sir, before I let you go. If Russia does not de-escalate and invades, as people are warning, is imminent, more broadly, what does that mean for security on the European continent? Well, obviously, it would be a, a very undesirable uh, step. Uh, I don't want to speculate as to what ultimately might be the repercussions of that, but the immediate, the immediate uh, thing that Russians would see is their own sons and daughters uh, killed in a conflict which is totally unnecessary. This would be a conflict of choice. And Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin could choose a different path, a more peaceful path, a diplomatic path that wouldn't cost Russian lives and hurt the Russian economy. That's what we're calling upon them to do. OK, Minister James Cleverly, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.